Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch on a 2020 Chrysler Pacifica. So here we have our trailer hitch actually installed on our Pacifica and you can see it's really nice looking in the fact that this is going to be a concealed cross tube which is an awesome thing to have because I think it looks a lot better as most people think a trailer hitch is going to be hanging down and that is the case on some of them but with this being concealed, the only thing that you actually have exposed is the business end here of the hitch. So when you need to load up your accessories, it's easily accessible, but also the rest of the hitch is hidden, giving you a nice OEM appearance. Taking a closer look at our hitch, you can see it is a two inch by two inch opening. So that's gonna be really great for a lot of different accessories, whether it be a cargo carrier, a bike rack, or really anything that you wanna hook up, including a trailer. Now, speaking of that, we also have a rolled steel safety chain loop for your trailer. So that way, when you are hooking up your chains, it's nice and open. It's gonna allow you to put your standard hook, no problem, as well as your clevis style that's larger. That's gonna hook up with ease. It's nice and open there. Now, you're also going to see this has a 5 8 hitch pin hole. Now, the hitch pin and clip is not actually included with the hitch, but a lot of times your accessories are actually going to come with those. So if you want to pick up a different style than what your accessory has, including a locking one, we have plenty of those available at eTrailer. So getting some quick measurements, we're going to measure from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest part on the rear fascia. That's gonna put us right at about six inches. So that's something to keep in mind when you put your accessories in. Sometimes they can actually sit pretty far back and might actually make contact with the rear fascia. So you wanna measure where your hitch pin hole is, how far out, make sure it falls into that category within that six inches. That way it's not gonna hit your rear bumper here and scratch it up once you load it up. Now the thing we're gonna check is our ground clearance. And so from the bottom of the receiver tube opening to the ground, it's right at 10 inches, which is pretty decent. You shouldn't have any worries about making contact, but something to keep in mind, when you load your accessories up, if they extend out, if you go up a hill, those will actually tilt closer to the ground. So something to keep in mind when you have your accessories loaded up. So let's talk about specs of the hitch. Now, you can have a gross trailer weight rating of 4,000 pounds, and that's gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. So decent amount. You have a tongue weight of 400 pounds, which is gonna be the downward pressure here on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So that's gonna be your bike racks or cargo carriers, that suspended weight that's actually going to go on the receiver tube opening. Now this can be used with weight distribution. It's gonna bump those numbers up. In fact, your gross trailer weight rating is gonna to go to 5,000 pounds and your tongue weight's actually gonna to go to 500. Now it's important to check the vehicle's owner's manual just to make sure that the vehicle is actually capable of that weight. Compare that with the hitch. You're gonna to wanna to take the lower of those two numbers just to keep you safe. Now, as far as installation goes, it's a pretty straightforward uh, install. You're going to have to remove some underbody panels uh, and you're going to be using a fish wire technique for the bolts to actually go through the chassis, which seems a little bit scary, but I'm here to walk you through all of those steps and we're going to get your hitch installed. So let's take a look at that now. Now, we're going to begin our installation by pulling off this underbody panel. Now, if you're doing this in your garage or in your driveway, it might help to raise the vehicle, at least in the rear up, putting it on jack stands, but make sure you chalk the front tires, that way it's not gonna move on you. And really, that's just gonna make it a little bit easier to gain access to some of these bolts. Uh, but you might actually be able to do this without raising the vehicle up. It's kind of how much area do you really wanna work with. Now, ours is up on a lift to make it a little bit easier for you all to see the actual process. So, first thing we're gonna wanna do is grab an eight millimeter socket, and we're gonna be removing nine eight millimeter screws. And they're kind of hard to find, or at least some of them, but we'll start by following this outside edge. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the last three are kind of tricky. On the driver's side, if you look up, you're gonna see kind of facing towards the middle of the vehicle, you're gonna have another one here, another one here, and then we're also gonna be removing this. So that's gonna make for a total of nine. So we'll go ahead and start removing those. Now, during this whole process, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you hold on to your hardware as it's gonna make it a lot easier to actually get it back in place once we're done. So I suggest holding it in a cup or some way of organizing all your hardware so you have it ready for installation. So 
So now we're going to go back with a 10 millimeter socket and there's going to be a few of these plastic nuts here. So you're going to see one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to get those and then there's also these two up here. So we'll go ahead and get those all removed. Next, you're gonna to wanna to grab a flathead screwdriver and there's gonna be these plastic screws here and these are gonna be pretty easy to get out, um, but sometimes you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of downward pressure by pulling this as you do it um, and that's just gonna kinda of work this down. Um, let's see, we'll loosen that. And you might actually kinda of go underneath it here as you turn it to kinda of get these to pop off. So go ahead, you can loosen these up. Let's try to get that downward pressure here. I'm just using a trim panel removal tool to kind of give it that pressure. That way I don't have to push on the panel itself. There we go. These are kind of tricky here, but you can see there's actually a stud that kind of screws into these. So these kind of move a little bit. So putting that pressure is going to allow it to sit in those threads as you pull it down. So don't be afraid to kind of pull on this as you're twisting it. Now we're going to get ready to pull our panel down, but I can see here, I pulled off this center section down and that's going to reveal two more 10 millimeter plastic nuts here. So we can go ahead and get those off as well. Now if we got all of our hardware off, the panel should come out. And we're just gonna set this aside. We're gonna need this later on. So for now, just kinda set it to a safe spot. You're also gonna have these little plugs here. This is from those actual plastic ones that we pried off. So make sure you have both of those as we'll need them for reinstallation. So now at this point, we're gonna be lowering down the exhaust and you don't want it just supporting itself by its own weight as it can actually damage it further along on the exhaust. So if you're doing this in your driveway, you might have something set up to actually rest this on. Since we're on a lift, what we're gonna be doing is actually use a cam buckle strap. And I'm just gonna find two points from the suspension. Um, and that way I can actually use this as my support. Now we do have cam buckle straps here available at e-trailer if you wanna pick one up. But again, if you're doing this in your driveway, uh, just have something ready to kind of put it there. That way it's not just hanging down. Tighten that up. Now to get the exhaust lowered down, there's gonna be two rubber isolators that we're gonna actually pry that out from. Now, these can get a little bit uh, gummy and hard to actually pry apart. So using maybe a little bit of soap water if you have some available or even a penetrating oil is gonna work really well to kind of allow this to pop out a little bit easier. So I'm gonna just go ahead and spray where that's actually going into the isolator. So we have our one here. We also have one in the center section right about there. And then I'm gonna be using a pry bar. They have exhaust isolator tools that kind of pry those out, but generally with a uh, long flat head or a pry bar, you should be able to kind of get these loose. So using the actual exhaust tip as leverage, I'm gonna just kind of pry this back a little. You may have to kind of work at a few different angles, but you'll see we're gonna work this back until it finally pops off. And it really doesn't matter if you're popping the bottom one off or the top one, as long as we get this off, that's the main thing. Um, so if the bottom one's giving you trouble, you can probably work on the top one and see if that gives you any better luck. There we go. So just be patient with that and we should be able to get this off. Now we're gonna do the same thing on our center isolator as well. So now with the exhaust loose, that's gonna allow us to kind of move this around as necessary. And we're gonna see pretty quickly that we're gonna to need to move it because we can see on our heat shield, which we'll be removing, there's gonna be two plastic M10 nuts here. So there's one actually tucked up here 
on the exhaust. So having this exhaust off is gonna allow me to kind of push it over to gain access to that. Then there's also one on this backside here. So go ahead and get those removed. Now we can pull our heat shield off and we'll set this aside for now. So now we're gonna take our carriage bolt as well as our fish wire and a spacer block. And what we're gonna be doing is actually feeding the spacer block and the carriage bolt up into these two holes. And that's gonna allow us to actually bolt our hitch into place. Now it is kind of tricky to get these fed in, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now on these actual Pacificas, there is like a center section here. So the innermost part is gonna be a little bit more narrow and it's obviously gonna be hard to see, but if you can, we're gonna to try to feed this wire along the outside edge. And the way we're gonna to wanna to do this is this coiled end, we're gonna start at the furthest hole and I'm gonna just kind of give it a slight bend and I'm gonna keep this along that outside edge as we push through. Now we're gonna be feeding this in. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that this end doesn't go all the way through. But once we push this through a decent amount, we can get our hand on this back square hole. And we're gonna kind of feel around for that coiled end. And you can actually poke out the side of the frame as we see here. If that's the case, just feed that back in. Take your time here. Eventually, once we get this pushed through, we should be able to find it. And then try to get that coiled end through the square hole. There we go. And once we get this coiled end through again, just make sure that doesn't pull all the way through. Now you're gonna take your spacer block and you can go ahead and make sure it's the smaller one. In the kit, there's two long ones and then there's shorter ones. We're gonna be using the shorter ones here. So just make sure you have the proper one there. And you can kind of just feed that in. And then on this coiled end, we're simply going to just thread our carriage bolt on here. Now we'll come back to this end of the fish wire. And feeding this carriage bolt in, it should fit. You just might have to give it a little bit of an angle change there. And we're just gonna slightly pull this in. If it gets hung up, just kind of jostle it around a little bit. And eventually you should see you have that bolt pulled through. Now, this fish wire you're gonna to wanna to keep attached because when we feed this up on the hitch, this is gonna keep it in place and make sure that this doesn't feed back into the frame because if the bolts go back in the frame while putting the hitch up, it's gonna make for a little bit more interesting of an install. So now that we have this one, we're gonna do the same exact technique for this hole as well, feeding it through the same square here. Now, when we get to our driver's side, if you have a hybrid model, it is gonna get a little bit different. If you don't have the hybrid model, it's actually gonna be pretty simple as you're gonna see those holes are gonna be very comparable to the passenger side. But on the hybrid, you actually have this canister here. This is gonna be your EVAP. Uh, for the fuel tank and so we're actually going to need to drop this down and with the hybrid models you should have the extra hardware kit that's going to actually move this so for now let's go ahead we're going to have two 10 millimeter bolts that are attaching this to the frame rail so we're going to go ahead and lower this down So now at this point, if your vehicle has a ground wire attached to this ground stud, you're gonna wanna actually relocate it using the bolt that's supplied in the hardware kit to the outer hole here. And that's just gonna get this out of the way for the hitch. Now ours doesn't actually have the wire, so we can kind of move along to the next step. And that's gonna be taking off these brackets here on the canisters. And you're gonna want a 10 millimeter socket or a 10 millimeter wrench on the top and we can go ahead and get that nut. And then we can actually pull this bracket off here. Now, it is gonna have another one on the other side, so you can see one side's loose. We'll just go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So again, put your wrench there, up top. And you may have to go from this outside edge if you are using a wrench. If you have a deep well socket, you could probably get it from up top. Um, but I'm gonna have to kind of get at an angle here. Okay. 
can actually rotate this canister a little bit as it is mobile, so that's going to make it a little easier as well. And we'll get that wrench right on our 10 mil. And then we can go ahead and remove the nut on the bottom side. Now, should be able to get this bracket out. The bolt's kind of just hanging up top there. I might take my socket to it. There we are. And now we can actually grab the new brackets that come with the kit. So now grab your bracket and you're gonna see there's a smaller hole as well as a larger hole. Now this is gonna have our carriage bolt eventually pass through it. And this is actually gonna go where we just took our bracket off. So taking your bolt here with the flat washer, run that through. And then on the bottom side, we're actually gonna have a flange nut as well as another flat washer. So let's go ahead and we'll feed this through. Now it does seem like it's pretty tight here. Um, the bolt's a little large, but I think I can actually thread this in by hand, or if you really want to, you can run a drill bit through the plastic just to enlarge that hole, just to kind of get it in a little bit better. Let's see. It is pretty tight. So let's go ahead and get a drill bit and just enlarge that. So to get our bolts to go through a little bit, a little bit easier, I have an 11 30 seconds drill bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and enlarge this hole. And I'll do the same on the other side as well. So now, pass your bolt through that hole. Follow it up with another flat washer before putting our flange nut on. And for now, we can kind of just leave this hand tighten on. You don't have to crank that down because we're going to want to be able to move this around when putting this through with our carriage bolts. So go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So with this canister actually dropped down, we're gonna just repeat that same process as we did on the other side of the vehicle with our fish wire technique. Now again, remember, use these short ones for the front here. So let's go ahead and feed this back. Just another quick tip, before we feed this one in, you can see this clip here that actually uh, was for our canister bracket. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of take a flat head here bend it down a little bit and we can work that off as we're not going to need it and it's also going to allow that hitch to settle a little more flush there as well so now we're actually going to be doing the fish wire technique on this back one it's going to be a little bit different as we're using the longer spacer blocks here um, in fact it's going to be a little bit easier so what we're going to do is coil this on have your spacer block already threaded through there and then you can actually just feed that carriage bolt up and then follow it with that spacer block. And then you can just pull straight down. Now make sure that spacer block is kind of sitting in a nice flat spot so you can get this sitting just right. Now we'll go ahead and we'll do the same, same fish wire technique and the same long bracket on the other side. So now you're gonna to wanna to grab an extra set of hands and we're actually gonna get the hitch in place. Now you're gonna see the fish wires here. We're gonna to wanna to feed these through the holes, at least on the passenger side. Now make sure you're using the proper ones. So we have the two forward most. The center one's actually just for a stud that's on the chassis. And then we have our rear one here. So route those through and you're gonna just kinda of raise this up, pulling the fish wires as you go. And you're gonna want those to feed through. And once you kind of have those through, you're gonna to want to have your conical tooth washer as well as your nut ready. So your conical tooth washer, you'll see the teeth here, that's gonna to face towards the actual hitch so it can bite into the metal. Now this part is very important as we are gonna be taking off the fish wire very slowly. You don't wanna push this up into the frame Otherwise, we're gonna have to actually get that out. So what we'll do is we'll pull on this fish wire here. And what I like to do is actually kind of hold that stud 
in a spot where it can actually move up. Um, sometimes if you get your finger on the top portion of it like that, you can kind of hold it at an angle. So then you can go ahead, get your conical tooth washer facing again towards the hitch in place. And then you're gonna follow it up with the nut. And we're just gonna kind of hand tighten it just for now to kind of keep that in place. Again, taking extra precaution that we don't feed this back up into the frame. So with that hand tightened on there, that's at least gonna hold this up in place on our passenger side. Now the driver's side, we're gonna head over there real quick. Same thing, you're gonna to wanna to feed your fish wires through, but this is where it gets a little bit different. So we have our canister and that's actually gonna sit on the bottom portion of the um, hitch itself. So first we'll get the hitch in place. You may have to move your canister a little bit, just kind of get that room in there. And you're gonna wanna make sure also you have this fed through the correct wire. Should be in line with the other hole that's slightly behind there. So let's get that in there. And now we can see here we have our bracket from our canister. Since it's nice and loose, it's gonna be easy to move. Now we can feed our fish wire through our bracket on the front here. as well as our back one. This should all slide up with studs going through our brackets that we mounted up. And this front one's gonna stay the same. So what I'm gonna do just to kind of gain us a little bit of holding power here, I'm gonna go ahead, get our conical tooth washer on here. And just hand thread that nut on. So now we have a nut on both sides. So this should actually support itself. Now, if it is cumbersome to actually have that conical tooth washer up while you're threading that, you can actually omit it for the first one just to kind of get that in place so it holds it up, but you are gonna to wanna to go back and make sure you put that on before tightening these all down. So now with the two nuts actually holding this in place, we can go back to the rest of them. Now, on your canister side, if you have the hybrid again, just make sure that that is actually sitting like that on both sides fed through our bracket. So now just make sure that your hardware is hand tightened down. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna tighten down our canister box first with a torque wrench. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we actually have these here at E-Trailer. You can rent them at an auto parts store generally. Now we're gonna be torquing all of the bolts to a specific setting that's in the instruction manual. Um, so it's an important step to make sure that you're not putting too much stress on the threads, but also it's not gonna come loose over time. Now, originally these were 10 millimeters. Uh, the new hardware is actually a 13. So again, same process. We're gonna actually take our uh, wrench and put that up top as we torque these down. Now, as far as finding the right spot, you can see there's a little bit of play, but it should find a nice center home here where it's not you know, putting the hoses in a bind or anything. It's gonna kind of level itself out there. So once it's in that position, We can go ahead and get our wrench on the top. And we have our torque wrench on the bottom. Okay. Once we have that torque, we're gonna go on the back side and do the same thing. 
So now with a 19 millimeter socket, we're gonna go back and all those carriage bolts and those nuts, we're gonna go ahead and torque those down to the specs that are in the instruction manual. Now some of them might get a little bit tricky to get to, um, so I'll be using a swivel on a few. Um, on the actual passenger side where the exhaust is, the good thing is since that exhaust is down, we'll be able to move that to gain access to those. So go ahead and torque all those down to the proper spec. So now with your hardware tightened and torqued down to proper specs, the hitch is installed, but we're gonna need to do some trimming to our heat shield as well as the underbody panel. So first thing, we're gonna do the heat shield. We're just using the instruction manual. I've gone ahead and made the marks here with a paint marker. Now, as far as cutting this, you can use snips like I'm using here, and it's gonna go through it pretty easy. If you don't have a set of 10 snips at home, it's no big deal. If you have a rotary tool, um, really any cutting method, uh, angle grinder, whatever you have, just kind of go along this line to get that cut. Now I also recommend going over it with a file or a grinding bit afterwards just to kind of get some of those burrs off. That way you're not cutting yourself upon reinstallation. So now with this trim, this should fit pretty easily back up where it was originally. And we'll just go ahead with these little plastic nuts here and we'll just tighten this back up in place. With the heat shield now back in place, we can go ahead and put our exhaust hangers back. So make sure you get the front as well as the rear. It should pop on pretty easy. Just kind of align that and then pull on the back side of it. You can actually push the exhaust towards it too to help kind of get that through. There we go. We're going to do the same here. Now we can take our strap out. Now you're gonna to wanna to trim your underbody panel and in the instruction manual, they have you cut out quite a large section and I really think you can omit that and still keep a lot of the underside arrow as well as a cleaner look. And so I've kind of test fitted it up there and what I found is if you cut out this little section here, this is gonna be where the receiver tube opening is, it's gonna work pretty well. And to look a little bit closer, it's not perfect spec by any means, but you can see in between these two tabs, I left roughly about an inch, just kind of went straight back and you can see right here at this ridge, kind of worked our way down here. Now, you may be able to trim it up just a little bit better and get it a little more fine tuned, but I think overall, once this is installed, it looks a lot better than having the whole section cut out. So let's go ahead and we're gonna get this back in place in the reverse order that we actually took it down. So have all your hardware ready and get this back up into place. So now with our underbody panel actually put back up, the only thing left to do is get our vehicle off of our lift or your jack stands and hook up your accessories and hit the road. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch on a 2020 Chrysler Pacifica.